Welcome to the fourth part of our solution. So in this video we want to automate and organize our NumPy code by writing a function. And by doing so we can reuse our code by just calling the function and uh, this is actually only one line of code then. And we actually want to build on the function that we created in the Python standard library solution. So I just copied it here from previous lessons. So feel free to have a quick look at the Python standard library solution videos or the notebooks to recall how we derived them, the function here. And actually we only need a few adjustments to adopt here the function to our NumPy code and therefore we just copy here the function. And now we want to create our function with NumPy code and I paste here the function with Python standard library code. And first of all, we want to change here the name of our NumPy function. So it's princess NP. And actually the header stays here the same. So we have the parameter size applicants where the default argument is 100. Then we have size test group with the default argument 50. Then we have 1000 simulations and uh, the seed. So up to now in our NumPy solution, we used uh, the seed one, two, three. So we could also do this here, but uh, it actually doesn't matter which seed we use as the default seed here. Then here with the parameter metric, we can still decide whether our function returns um, our results array with all results of all simulations or the probability of getting Prince Charming or the average of all simulations. And last but not least, with uh, the parameter n best, we can determine if uh, the best prints of the test group or the second best or third prints of the test group should actually be the reference prints. And uh, the default value is one here. So the best prints in the test group is actually the reference prints. So now let's head on to the function body and what we have to change here in comparison to our Python standard library solution is actually the process of creating our results lists or results array. So until here. Then once we have our results array, we can still calculate uh, the probability of getting Prince Charming, the average. And also here we can keep uh, the if elif statements where we check which metric um, our function should return. So actually we have to delete here everything in the function body from here until here. And let's copy here our NumPy code from above. So it's here. And let's paste it here. And let's mark here our pasted code and we have to make an indent here by pressing the tab key. Then we have to set here the seed to a seed. So we actually define our random seed here in the header. So we can pass uh, whatever seed we want to have here. Then actually here our code produces a NumPy array results, which uh, stores all results of all simulations. And therefore we have to adjust here the calculation of uh, prop best. So actually NumPy array does not have a method count. And therefore we just copy here also the code from here. So calculating the amount of Prince Charmings in our results array. So we have to delete the, this part and paste here our NumPy part. So now the probability of getting Prince Charming it's actually the amount of Prince Charmings in our results array divided by the amount of sims. And uh, the average we can calculate uh, with uh, the mean method. So the NumPy array has a mean method. And this is actually all. So now we should be ready to uh, define here our new function princess NumPy. So let's run here the cell. And let's check whether the function works. So we are calling our function here with uh, the metric probability best. So our function should return the probability of getting Prince Charming when we have 100 applicants and a test group size of 50 and we use 1000 simulations by default. 
So let's try this out. And we get here 35.9% probability of getting Prince Charming. And this is actually exactly the same as here above when we used our code not organized in a function. So you can see it here. So our function should actually work. And now comes actually the interesting part. So we want to compare now our Python standard library code with our NumPy code in terms of speed. So the rationale why we also created NumPy code is to speed up our code in order to perform more complex analysis and also in order to use more simulations to have more accurate results with less random noise. So, but now we have to check if uh, this is really the case. So if our NumPy code is uh, really faster than our Python standard library code. But first of all, we want to check whether our princess function, so this Python standard library code and our princess NP function, so this NumPy code, actually give us uh, the same results or at least approximately the same results. And uh, therefore we are using 100,000 simulations and the functions should return actually the probability of getting Prince Charming. So let's run both cells here. Of course, we first have to define here our Python standard library function and we have to import uh, the random module. And now it should work. So here we get a probability of 34.9% and let's also check here our NumPy code. And here we get a probability of 35.0%. So we are actually here very close and uh, the difference is actually only in the random noise. So there shouldn't be any systematic difference between both codes or both functions. All right, so now let's measure the speed of both functions and therefore we use uh, the magic function time it and time it actually measures uh, the time that our machine needs to run our function or to process here our operations. And in both cases we use uh, 1000 applicants, we use uh, 10,000 simulations and uh, the function should return the probability of getting Prince Charming and we are using a test group size of 500. So let's do this here. So calling our princess function here takes on average 8.25 seconds. And let's also run here our NumPy code and uh, measure the time. And our NumPy code takes on average 524 milliseconds. So which is actually 0.52 seconds. So on average we could say that our NumPy code is about 15, 16 or 17 times faster than our code with Python standard library. So this is actually quite a lot. However, there are some other examples where our NumPy code is 50 to 100 times faster. So it seems like that our princess challenge here is actually not the optimal example for very, very fast NumPy code, but still 15 or 60 times faster is still quite a very good improvement here. And uh, there might be two reasons why our NumPy code is not 50 or 100 times faster. So if we have a look here at our NumPy code, we still have here two for loops. So we have to shuffle each row of our matrix separately. And as far as I know, there is no solution that is more efficient here. And also here we have to check for each simulation which prints in the select group is better than the respective reference prints in the test group. So also here we do not have a pure vectorized code. And I'm pretty sure that there exists a solution that is even faster and better. So if you find the solution, do not hesitate to post uh, the solution on the course Q&A board. So I'm pretty sure that here for the NumPy solution, there exists even a better solution. All right. So now we are finished here with our video and in the last four videos we produced a quite fast uh, NumPy code and here with the uh, fast NumPy code we are now able to optimize our strategies and also change our strategies. So this is what we are doing in the next videos and I hope to see you there. Bye.